Hi again, everybody. I'm John Losing, and welcome to Your City, Your Issues. According to the United States Geological Survey, there's a more than 50% chance that a 7.2 magnitude earthquake or greater will strike Southern California sometime in the next 30 years. Thousands of lives could be lost, along with billions of dollars in the local economy uh, would come to a complete standstill. With that staggering possibility in mind, the state and the city of Calabasas are doing all they can to make sure that the public and the emergency first responders are in a state of maximum readiness if and when the big one occurs. Now, the city recently mailed to residents its emergency preparedness guide, which addresses not only the prospect of earthquake, but fire and flood disaster as well. Speaking of fire, the city's emergency operations center opened recently in response to that Porter Ranch fire near Simi Valley, which threatened the northern reaches of Calabasas. Well, today we're at the home of Mayor Pro Tem John Wolfson to find out how one Calabasas family is making preparations for disaster. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Back to your city, your issues. We're inside the home now of Mayor Pro Tem John Wolfson. John, thank you for having us by. No problem. I mentioned at the at the outset that the city's emergency preparedness guide is now available. It's been sent to residents. It's also available at City Hall. What's inside the guide, and why is it important at this time? The guide is great because it really tells you everything you need to do to prepare for emergencies. It's also good to have at hand with your emergency supplies. Well, I suppose one of the keys to surviving any disaster. Uh, would be uh, how to get ready before, what to do during the event, and, and then how to comport yourself afterwards. But the key really is preparation, isn't it? That's true. And, and you know, to help show residents the types of things that they should have in their emergency preparedness kit, I've laid out a lot of our supplies on our dining room table. All right, let's take a look. Okay, great. Well, without utilities and without a store to go to, it's important to have the supplies you need for yourself and your family for quite some time because help could be a while in arriving, correct? Yes, it's recommended that a family have at least 72 hours of supplies available in the event of an emergency, especially an earthquake. We get a broad view of what you have. Is this for John Wolfson? Is this for your family? Is this for three people, five people? What's the proportion of items you need? This is the amount of, of water and food and supplies that you would want for six people. And we even have dog food. If you have a pet, you want to have a supply of food for that animal with your emergency supplies also. Does the emergency guide spell out exactly what you need? Yes, the emergency guide will tell you um, what's recommended, what types of things you should have, things that you might not think about, um, such as having a um, camp knife or a can opener with the canned goods or having a radio, flashlights, um, masks. There are all kinds of different things that are recommended that you should have with your emergency kit. Let's talk about food. Dried goods, uh, canned goods, certainly nothing perishable, correct? Yeah, I would, I would say it's important to have um, canned goods, um, things that are sealed that last for a long time. It's important to have an appropriate amount of water. It's recommended that you have a gallon per person per day available. Speaking of water, you have some containers uh, is that for holding water? That there for holding water. For yes. holding water. What is the turnover for a kit? Does it last one year and things go bad? Can you keep it for five years? How long are they good for? You know, it's very important to be cognizant of the dates that things expire. Make sure you rotate your food and also make sure you rotate your water. Well, John, sometimes it may not be possible to stay in a home. You may be required to leave for whatever reason, and if you have to leave, 
you also need to be prepared. Yeah, and there's two things that you can do. First of all, your main bulk of your supplies should be in some sort of container, whether it be cardboard boxes or plastic containers or even suitcases. They should be stored so that they can be grabbed by the adult members of the household and taken with you. And you also want to make sure that you have a to-go kit, what the Red Cross calls a to-go kit. And in something that you can just grab very easily, you want food, water, first aid supplies, matches, and other things. They're all mentioned in the emergency preparedness So it's a, it's a mini version of what we have exactly. spread out exactly. here. Exactly. What about personal items, documents, uh, valuables, uh, heirlooms, those kinds of you things? Know, it's Is that part of the kit? Yeah, it's important to think about things, um, personal, personal items such as documents. It's also important to think about medications and having a supply of any necessary medications with your emergency supplies. I see some uh, some items that are going to take some batteries, so I guess before any of this stuff works, the radio and the flashlights, you also have to have your batteries. It's important, just like with food and water, to make sure that you have fresh batteries with your supplies. We also have a radio that's hand crank and a flashlight that you can shake and um, use. Do you have a so, generator for the home as well? No, um, we don't We don't have a generator. Um, there are people that have generators, and that is something that people can That would consider. be advisable. Yeah. John, let's talk about some of these items specifically. Uh, start with the, the, the face mask, because I suppose air quality would be pretty nasty after, certainly during a fire and perhaps during an earthquake. Yeah, the Red Cross recommends that you have face masks in your kit so that you are able to um, be around outside, especially if, you're, if you have to be camping outside, if you have to be outside of your house. Um, and uh, so it's important to have face masks in your kit. And the plastic bags, not for just for trash disposal? No, right? the plastic bags are also um, recommended to have in your kit so that you can use them for bathroom purposes. It's important to have uh, something as mundane as toilet paper in your emergency mm -hmm. kit. And this is a good light because uh, it's not candle fire. You get a lot more light from this. Yeah. And uh, certainly portable, and this could light up a whole room. Yes. Mm -hmm. The, um, uh, the utensils for eating important because uh, you're not going to be eating out of a can. You have to uh, maintain some semblance of civility. So you've got your plastic dishes I see in some cups. Yes, that's true. Plastic dishes, cups, um, utensils, as we talked about before, a can opener. Uh, it's important to be able to prepare your food. Yeah, to prepare your food. How about first aid, John? You've got a couple of options over there, I see. Yeah, you want to make sure you have plenty of uh, first aid materials in your kit. So we kind of um, have collected a couple different kinds of first aid kits, but they're all complementary to each other. You want to make sure you have enough band-aids, enough antiseptic, and enough other first aid supplies. Mm -hmm. Well, having your preparedness kit is important, but it's only part of the equation. Uh, John has also prepared his home in case of an earthquake or disaster. What have you done around the house to get ready? Well, it's important that you strap down large pieces of furniture to a wall, especially if they're tall. And it's important that you make sure that your family members are prepared and they know what to do. We have an escape ladder upstairs in case it's not possible to come down the steps to get out of the house. And all of every member of my family knows um, what our out-of-state contact phone number is. It's very important mm -hmm. to have an out-of-state contact phone number so that if you are separated or you're not at home in the time of an emergency, you can get in contact with other family members through your out-of-state contact number. How far does family need to go to, to bolt items down and to secure pictures and frames and furniture and so forth? Uh, just use good common sense? Is that the I think you use common sense. I think you buy the um, earthquake um, goo that's available that'll hold down um, breakable items that, so that you don't have a lot of breakage in your house um, uh -huh. when an earthquake occurs. If fire threatens this home, do you prepare your home? Do you have to shut uh, attic vents and, and windows and that kind of thing? Uh, do you have a plan in place uh, with the family to make those preparations? Yeah, I think the most important thing um, with a fire is that when you're told to evacuate, you're ready to evacuate. It's important for people to know that if they're, they think there's a threat of evacuation, they have their cars turned around backwards in their driveways, mm -hmm. and that they have the important items items that they need to take with them, any documents, any medication, um, any other things that they'll need that they don't want to lose in their home that they have with them and ready to go. Of course, earthquake proofing the home is only part of the equation. It's also important, John, to know what to do when the earthquake strikes, how to behave, where do you go. Uh, so what's, uh, what's the saying, stop, drop, and hold? How stop, does that drop, go? and hold. You want to make sure that if you're near uh, something like a table, you get under the table, you drop under it, and you hold on. I know in the past there have been some discussion about whether that was valid or not, because say you're under this table and the ceiling collapses, well, you're crushed. 
But wasn't that debunked because, in fact, the, these, these structures are so strong now and the, 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 the likelihood of a ceiling crashing down uh, is not very strong. You really want to be underneath something. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that that, that that is true, that most homes are built um, to fairly good earthquake standards. But they have proven that it is the safest place to be is under something solid like a table. And that's because of... Because of things that might be objects. falling, because of flying objects, because of glass, and because of plaster and other things, uh, lights that can mm -hmm. fall from the ceiling. Well, John has spoken about earthquake proofing his home and what he's done. Uh, right now, let's step outside to see what steps need to be taken outdoors to make sure that home is ready uh, for a major disaster.